And there are eunuchs who were made so by men. And there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. He that can take it, let him take it. Words from today's Holy Gospel for St. Agatha. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we honor the virgin martyr, St. Agatha, who is mentioned in the canon of the Mass and will be so recalled by name until the end of time, along with the apostles and the various other martyrs mentioned there. What a beautiful thing. St. Agatha's passion took place in Sicily in the year 251. Agatha must have been a very beautiful and wealthy woman because the Sicilian consul Quintinian tried to force her to become his wife. She refused. She had already consecrated herself to God as a virgin from her childhood. Quintinian then turned against her and tried to overcome her chaste mind and her virginal heart by installing her, this little innocent girl, in a brothel. She's like in her early teens or even 12, not even a teenager yet. This is pure torture for any virgin like Agatha to be put in a brothel, but this utterly failed. She was immovable. No one could come near her. Quintinian, who did not believe in God, brought her then before the courts on the charge of belonging to the outlawed Christian sect and sent her forth to be tortured. The accounts of her torture are frightful. She was racked. She was scourged. She was branded. Even her breasts were cut off And she was allowed no medicine or bandages or food when she was sent to a dark dungeon. I know in Rome, right next to San Crisogono, where the incorrupt body of of blessed Anna Maria Taigi is in state, beautifully laid out in a crystal coffin, right next door is the shrine or the church of St. Agatha. And in the apse is a huge painting of St. Agatha, with one of her breasts already shorn away and the other being cut off. It's an amazing, stunning picture. It puts you on your knees. Well, at this point, while she was in prison, St. Peter himself appeared to her accompanied by a youth carrying a torch. This is very important, this connection between virginity and the papacy, between virginity and the truth between chastity and the truth. This is God's grace-filled couplet. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But St. Peter applied ointment and healed her wounds and restored her breasts. Four days later, unmoved by the miraculous cure of her wounds, Quintinian caused her to be rolled naked over live coals mixed with potsherds. Agatha would pray passionately, passionately throughout all this, Lord... Thou who has created me and preserved me since my childhood, who has delivered my heart from the love of the world and protected my body from perdition, who has made me triumph over tortures and bonds, over iron and fire, I pray thee, receive my spirit from this earth into the bosom of thy mercy. They carried her broken body back to her prison, and while she prayed, even in prison, at that moment there was an earthquake, and Agatha died of her injuries. She has interceded many times against earthquakes and the eruption of Mount Etna, the most famous of which occurred on this day one year after her death. She also saved Malta in 1551 from an invasion of the Turks, Thus, she is invoked against earthquakes, volcanoes, and fires. Now, historically, it's well established that truth and chastity, there's a connection between truth and chastity. Whenever someone enters into heresy by denying a truth of our holy faith, they inevitably fall into all sorts of impurity of the body. How much more then do truth and virginity, perfect chastity, that's what virginity is, perfect chastity. If truth and chastity go together, how much more do truth and perfect chastity, that is virginity, go together? 
those who are guardians of the truth, like St. Peter, the first pope, and virgins, like St. Agatha, they go together. The Virgin of Virgins, the Blessed Virgin Mary, she drew down to herself the truth itself from the heavens. And he became incarnate in her womb, incarnate truth in the Virgin. St. John, the beloved apostle, the virginal apostle, wrote the most elevated of all the Gospels and received the Virgin Mary into his home. The virginal, St. Thomas Aquinas, the common doctor, the angelic doctor, the most clear-minded saint we've ever had. That's why he's the common doctor. He had the mind of an angel. He kept a relic of St. Agnes on his body, very much dedicated to her. St. John Vianney had St. Philomena. He could see in the souls. Purity of mind precedes purity of body. We need to have pure minds, pure in truth, and we'll be pure of body. They go together. Thus today, we see how St. Peter, the first pope, the first vicar of Christ, the head of the church, came to heal the Virgin Agatha. Truth and virginity go together. Today, in our time, there is a lack of adherence to the truth. There's outright denials of the truth. Heresy is everywhere. It is like a river of lies and error that flows forth from the mouth of the dragon as described in the 12th chapter of the Apocalypse. As a result, not surprisingly, wherever this river flows, there is unchastity, there is impurity, spurning even of virginity. Children are ashamed to admit they're virgins now. Now we have Sodom. Thus, we can say, the grammar of this river flowing from the devil's mouth that has flooded our world today is impurity. It's Sodom. No wonder we are constantly being barraged by impure images, impure programs, impure books, words, ideas, and thoughts. We need to fight back. And so we fight back with the truth being firmly established in our minds, that we adhere to the fullness of the faith, to the deposit of the faith given to us in our holy Roman Catholic Church. We have a deep love also for virginity and chastity, never joking about it, but always loving it, striving to be modest in all things, but most especially in our speech, our behavior, and our dress. In this way, we will fight and we will win. We will become immovable in that river flowing forth from the dragon's mouth. St. Agatha, St. Peter, lovers of truth and chastity and virginity, intercede for us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.